Hi, I'm Lucilla Ronai and welcome to the Conservation Starter. Today I'm giving you a summary of some of the questions I answered as part of Ask a Conservator Day. If you want to know what a conservator is or what conservation is, please check out my other videos. Ask a Conservator Day is an opportunity for conservators around the world and conservation organisations to answer your questions. So some ones that I've gotten in the past include, have you ever broken an object while treating it? And the honest answer is yes. <laughs> I'm going to give you a bit of information and context though. Uh, it was when I was a student and it was treatment two subjects. So it was the second time ever that I had been able to handle a paper object and treat it. It was a cartoon that had been attached to a backing board and it was incredibly moldy, the backing board and the cartoon. So I was doing a backing remover, which means you're shaving down the layers of this board, usually with a sharp instrument. In this case, it was a scalpel and things were going great. It was my first backing removal until the scalpel came from the back and went straight through the artwork. I was horrified. It was probably one of the worst days I'd ever had. And yeah, it was pretty tricky, but luckily I had a great teacher who talked me through it and said, the conservation lab is the best place for this kind of thing to happen because we know how to fix it. And also I was a student and they only gave objects they were willing for students to treat. So that meant it was uh, a low value object that didn't matter if while we learned there was some damage. So in the end, I was able to repair it and you couldn't even tell the damage had happened in the first place, except for the fact that I documented it very thoroughly. So it was a fantastic learning exercise and I think it's really important to look back on your mistakes and see what you've learned from them. And I certainly learned a lot from that. So question number two I'm gonna answer for Ask a Conservator Day is, why don't you just digitize everything in your collection and throw the collection away? So I've actually had this question a fair few times, especially when I've been in party situations, people are just like, well, why, why do you have a collection? Why don't you just photograph it and that's it? So there's a few things I wanna answer about this. When we're working with collections, they're not usually collected because of what they just look like or the information they contain. For example, a book. We're not just interested in the text in the book. It's usually the book itself, how it's being constructed, what it represents. You can't by photograph or digitizing something, replicate the touch, the smell, the feel, and all this other intrinsic knowledge and information and value, you can't replace an object with a photograph. A photograph of an object can be really useful. It can enable access. It also can help with preservation because it means the object itself needs to be accessed less, but it's not a replacement and never will be. And there's also this other big mixed conception that if you photograph something, you don't have anything to look after anymore because you can get rid of the object. But that's not the case because if you no longer have the object and the photograph now becomes the object or the digital file becomes the object, you still have to look after that file. You still have to make sure it lasts and stands the test of time. You have to make sure it migrates through different operating systems. It doesn't lose any data or quality. And you know, digital storage these days actually costs a lot of money, especially if we're meant to be keeping it forever. So in some ways, the physical storage of the object is easier to manage than digital storage and making sure you preserve the digital copy. So yeah, that's why we don't just digitize everything and throw the collection away. Because first of all, a digital copy can't replace the collection. And also you still need to look after the digital copy. So the third and final question I'm gonna answer for Ask a Conservator Day is, why do paper conservators and other conservators always say tape is evil? And there is a few reasons for this. First of all, pressure sensitive tape. So that tape that you might have in your office that you just peel off the roll and you stick on things and you put a little pressure and it sticks. Pressure sensitive tape. I can tell you I've probably spent hundreds of hours of my life removing that tape from paper documents where well-meaning people have stuck it on to repair tears, to join loose bits together. And I have to say, the fixing that it did of holding those two pieces together was far outweighed by the chemical damage that that tape with its plastic carrier and adhesive has caused the paper now. And I could spend two hours removing a piece of tape that's this long. It is agonizingly slow work and often it doesn't come off easily at all. And it leaves behind a lot of evidence that it's been there before. Some other tapes that I've had to remove from paper objects has include gaffer tape, Amazing for construction sites, not so amazing on paper objects. Linen tape, uh, masking tape, pretty much every tape there is in existence, 
I have had to remove it from a paper object and it is so hard. So that is in part why tape is evil. It is horrific to remove and it does far more damage than it helps. So say no to tape, please. So those are my answers for Ask a Conservator Day. If you have any more questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you don't want to miss another video about conservation, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you've stuck around this long and you're still watching, I've decided to try and tell a secret at the end of every video. So the secret for this week is sometimes when we're doing exhibition installs, we need to literally get inside exhibition cases and crawl around. So often we'll take our shoes off so we're not leaving marks. I just started work at the Maritime Museum and I had to take my shoes off to get in a showcase. And it was probably mid-May in Australia and I took off my shoes not remembering what socks I put on that day and they were my bright red Christmas pudding socks that had fluffy bits on them. I am always prepared now with good sock wear so I'm not caught unawares again. Thank you for joining me at the Conservation Starter. I'm Lucilla Ronai and I'll see you in the next video.